Thanks uh, to organizer to invite me. I, I know this is a wonderful place, so I accept immediately because at the very beginning I know, I know they have a list of invited speakers. I'm not there at this perfect conference. And then later on, they asked me to give a talk. Uh, I'm not in this field in general. So today I want to talk something about applications of uh, modular forms to die funding equation. Actually, I will talk about my uh, undergraduate student's uh, senior thesis at uh, Princeton University. So, uh, so I think probably it's, a, it's, a, it's accessible to everybody. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is a, is a congruent number problem. I talk about two papers. Uh, one is the, uh, the paper between me and my former PhD student and myself, then we end up with a problem, we don't know how to solve it. Then I, then I have an undergrad, undergrad student and who helped me solve the problem. So uh, that's the, the good purpose to have a student. Huh? So I will talk about a congruent number problem. So I give a definition. So I use a modern definition, not the original definition. So a positive integer n is a congruent number if um, it is the area of a right angled uh, triangle on over whose sides a rational lens. And the original definition is uh, it defined to be the uh, integer, to be a congruent number, which is a um, common difference of a uh, um, arithmetic progression of square of three rational numbers. So the congruent number problem so it's a it's a proposed as a 972 is considered as, as the oldest unsolved problem in number theory it says that to find in modern terminology find an algorithm um, for deciding uh, a number Deciding and finally many step to decide um, hmm, to decide whether or not a given um, integer is a congruent number. Oh well, I may give you a couple examples. So the, the typical example, that so is a 5, 20, 3, 3 over 2, 41 over 6. So this is a congruent number. Actually, um, was already, when they proposed the problem already in the list of that, but this number was rediscovered by Fibonacci um, maybe a few hundred years later. Another one we know familiar is 6, 4, 5, 3. Another one is 7, 24, um, 5, 35, 12, 3, 37, and 60. So you see, uh, pretty quiet from this example, you see that uh, the, 
the complexity of the right triangle have nothing to do with the complexity of the five, six, seven. Sometimes very simple, for sometimes very easy. But I have to say that it's not difficult to list even many congruent numbers. The problem is that if I give you a number to determine if it is a congruent or not. So as I said, it's the oldest um, unsolved um, problem in the number theory. The first major progress on this problem is a negative answer. It came by Fermat in 1659. So um, in the second term, we say one, two, three are not congruent. Well, I can restrict everything to square free number. And this theorem is also very interesting. This is the first problem in the history that the infinite descent has applied. So um, in some sense that, um, I mean, there, uh, because there, uh, to determine the one is not a congruent probably similar, is equivalent to sol solution of uh, uh, the Fermat equation of degree four. Uh, today, I want to describe another problem, a distribution problem. So this is sometimes described as a, a Falk law conjecture, but somehow already known probably to Fibonacci. So basically says that O n, so for n square free, O n congruent to five to seven, mod h are congruent. So all but density zero of n congruent to one to three mod h are not congruent. And this conjecture probably is known to Fibonacci at that time. And they, um, it's a pretty difficult conjecture. We still don't know how to prove it. And, uh, and there, another major theorem about this conjecture is, uh, is about primes. So let P be a prime. Then this conjecture is actually pretty nice. The first theorem is proved by Journal G is 1874. So if a P is a congruent three mod eight, then P is not a congruent. For non-congruent number is always easier. The next one is a major um, progress. Give my hinger 9052. Uh, when P congruent to five seven mod eight, then P is congruent. So I have to say a little bit of this method. So the thing of the method is the first time that the modularity of modular form been applied to solve the Diophany equation. There's also the same paper that Hingen announced his proof of the Gauss class number one problem. If you open the book, paper, actually he talked about congruent number from beginning to the end. On the very last page, he announced his proof that there's no tense class, uh, tense uh, imagined quadratic field with class number one. And this is, uh, um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the work after, what happened after 1952. And I have to say that there, when he wrote this paper, he was already 59 years old. And his paper was not accepted by community for until the four years after his death. So it's a pretty much a sad story. But his influence uh, to today's mathematics is uh, remarkable. And he's the first time to, to use the modularity of the uh, elliptic curve. OK, the theorem I'm going to describe
is the following theorem. The first theorem over there is always easier for non-congruent. Is Brown 1994. So at least 41% of n congruent 1 to 3 mod 8 um, are not congruent. And uh, I will give you why 41.9. It's something to do with uh, this sum. Um, 1 minus t 2 negative 1, negative 3. So this is equal to, is, a, is the most equal to. So then uh, the theorem I'm going to talk about today, as I may pay a lot of attention, is another theorem. Is my student Schmidt Smith? Sorry. <laughs> uh, he proved that 2015, actually 2016, actually today, um, that at least he finished last year. Uh, he's now a, a graduate student in Harvard University. At least 55, 9% of n congruent to 5, 6, 7, mod 8 are congruent. And one thing I wanted, I mean, I know there's many beautiful results and about the PhD conjecture recently by Manjo and his collaborators. Um, they have this density theorem. But the density theorem I write a blackboard actually is explicit. So actually, I can list all these numbers down. It's not about, it's not a probability result. It really, I give a list. Uh, you can write each of these numbers precisely. So all the algorithm I write a blackboard is a polynomial time. It's not like a Tenor's, uh, Tenor's algorithm, it actually is not a polynomial time. So it's a pretty, uh, a nice thing. It's not only a probability result, I actually give you a list. Okay, so this is my uh, first part, introduction. Second part about my BSD conjecture. So I just list, um, so I, I, for n uh, integer square free, I will fix that. So we consider the following elliptic curve, the n y square x q minus x. The first proposition, they're probably already known to Fibonacci, is that n is congruent if and only if n of q uh, is inf infinite. Of course, Fibonacci doesn't know this has a group law, but he probably already made a connection to the, this elliptic curve. So the BSD conjecture are going to talk about it. Uh, is a general thing. So let E yeah, and the elliptic curve. And the first part, rank E over Q equals all the vanishing of E and S. The second part, the Shavaruchi group of E is a finite. I'm gonna, uh, we're not gonna, I'm gonna define this one. Uh, we're not gonna define this thing. So the, the R's, if I write this one to be R, then uh, we have the R's derivative of E1, is the, the tail expansion equal to something on the regulator times Cardinality of Sha divided by the torsion group square times uh, the period times the Tamagawa number. Uh, we're not going to define all of this in. So I just give you a couple of remarks. 
So first thing is it's given by channel based on our, our work of VSPJ uh, is that the BSD gives a um, congruent number problem. But the algorithm he constructed is about a solution solved by the quadratic equation and uh, counting the number of solutions, mod two. So it's not really uh, a good algorithm. Um, the second part, BSD plus uh, the Goldfield conjecture. Goldfield, the 50% conjecture implies the distribution conjecture. The reason is uh, the, the sign of functional equation of this uh, E n is equal to one if n is congruent to one, two, three, mod h is uh, negative one, five, six, seven, mod h. So sign of the functional equation which determines um, the function. The Goldfield conjecture basically says that the vanishing of error function should be minimal uh, according to uh, the sign functional equation in probability. Okay, so some, in some sense we can stop here because we reduce everything to BSD conjecture, uh, trying to prove BSD, right? So then, uh, of course, I can ask my student to do this problem. So, so instead, I ask them to apply uh, the, some parts, some cases the BSC already proved. So I just, just summarize what's proved yet. And the course of wires um, is 1977. And the core of Zagia. And the uh, upper 1986, the Kolivagen. Probably 1989, and Rubin, 1990. I guess I forget that. Anyway, so these are two about the CM elliptic curve. These are two about arbitrary elliptic curve. So basically, I so if all the uh, we have two parts, a e of s is less than one, then the BSD, uh, the first part and the second part uh, hold. There's no problem. Then uh, if, if E has CM, then the LE as a one, not zero, then PSD third part hold up to powers of beta primes. Beta primes including two and other prime di dividing a discriminant. So it is a two O or P divided discriminant of E. Okay, so the main theorem we prove, uh, but in this part actually a theorem by Schmidt. Schmidt. I got confused. Okay, it's based on on uh, work of uh, Tian, Yuan, and myself is the following. So for the same, for T inside, one, two, three for each. Um, uh, Yen satisfies um, full BSD I said full PSD with trivial SHA. Um, of square free. And um, congruent to T mod eight uh, with density. Okay, let me, this is completely ridiculous. Um, I, I have to say, um, trivial of square about um, 
satisfy this thing about, let me try to write it right, with a trivial SHA for about, Forty-one percent nine of n congruent T mod H. So this is, this is what I try to say. Actually, this is exactly density. You can estimate how many elliptic curves there. I mean, the the size is trivial, and the full BSD hold. So, and in our case, you combine with the result I write in above, you need to take care of the p equals two. That's the only problem you need to take care. But that's not not treated by Rubin in his work. The second part is that for given T inside five, six, seven, uh, then the rank of E of N of Q equals one, and the sharp of E of N, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm this is that two, I only consider the Two part or two infinity part is 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 zero uh, for about for at least so this uh, for five six seven the result is not strong enough uh, the reason is I'm going to explain at the very end uh, why uh, the result of five six seven. Is not as good as one two three, because for for one two three we use a vast budget formula. For five six seven we use Hingen's original argument, um, which is not very, um, which is good, but not you cannot get if and only if, if results. And recently we uh, so my student, uh, a PhD student, trying to develop an apiatic vast budget formula. When that formula is done. Then I expect you can get a better result for five, six, seven. What? Uh, rank zero, yes. With uh, with uh, okay, e n of q rank zero, and this is a trivial, is that forty one nine percent? So let's say. Um, where, where am I? It's four. I need to put it slightly down. For at least uh, the two category, 62%, if t equals five and a seven, And uh, and forty one point nine percent if n is congruent to t minus six. And again, at the zero point one nine is uh, this a product. I don't know how do they get this in. Um, maybe something else. So that's a that's a result, and it's pretty nice because the full BSD hold here. And in the recent, I think in the recent, we have not yet completely uh, proved the full BSD for second part. Um, but probably in the near future, as I say that, uh, once we develop a new uh, period of formula, maybe you can do that. So now on a, in the time, I will do two things. First, I will sketch the proof in a faster way. In the last part, I will talk about the period formula. So, so that uh, how to apply here is formula to, to do BSD. The so schedule proof. So I only can see that the n congruent to one, two, three, mod h. And uh, so I will define a number. Uh, I define the error of n to be Le n of one, uh, e over q of tau. So I basically rewrite this uh, uh, there's a BSD, the third formula, I put everything on one side, and uh, I leave the shard on the other side. Divide by the period E of N, and the, the Tamagawa number, I take the square root. 
The reason is I know this should be an integer, but the definition here is only a, a real number, right? So this is something I want to do. So the BSD, uh, I mean the, the third part, so I assume, so assume L of N is not zero, the third part is basically, uh, means the following that L of N is equal to the cardinality of shallow rich group. Um, but this one we know is less equal than uh, the, the two sigma. No, I already take a square root here. Oh, it's square root, square root. Yeah. Right. So, so everything is square root. So why should I do that? <laughs> okay, let's say, since this is the case, maybe you should have forget about the part eight now. <laughs> I have a good reason to do that because uh, but somehow, in a in a in a, in a vast the formula, you one side is always the pure the square. When you do BSD, is always a square too. So so you might prove you will see that if you apply this formula, you have to define the square root of error function. So actually, that's the thing in my mind. So the, the this is four from four is the cardinality e n q over tau and. Um, yeah, so that's the number we have. So what do we want to do? So we want to, um, we want to construct, we want to study, uh, find n such as that the other two part equals uh, the other two part of uh, the sigma group, uh, divided by four, so that's basically, we want this one to be zero. So that's basically what we proof. Okay, so this is uh, a purpose. So now I have uh, three steps. Um, the first step is, uh, is basically a vast formula to estimate their error values. So the step one, estimate error of n mod two. So we, we somehow, uh, so the theorem is a given, is a 10 um, UN and myself, I've done a few years ago. The first thing we want to show the error of n is a square of an integer. And the second thing is L n is congruent to the following crazy number. You rewrite n to be d0, d1, dl, take any decomposition, not ordered, but you require that di is congruent to one mod h, when i is bigger than one. Okay, and uh, then the inside is crazy, is i from zero to l, you, you count the cardinality of class group of q of di and a square. And it's mod two. 
And the formula sounds crazy because they write a formula like that. But remember that the cost group of a quadratic field and uh, the square that, and cost group is very difficult to calculate. But if we only calculate the mod two, it's easy, it's given by, so this is, a, I give a remark. So there's a, there's a cardinality of Q of D square can be calculated, uh, and mod two calculated by, um, by a matrix called uh, uh, calculate using using matrix red matrix in uh, F2 in terms of of Laronda symbol. Right? You know, uh, what I try to say, the PQ is always plus or minus one for P Q divided D. So this is the F2. I mean, this calculation is pretty fast. Um, so it's not a terrible uh, formula. So in other words, it gives any insight. You can calculate it very fast. This one is a one or zero. This is the first step. The second step two, so what you're gonna do is estimate, um, estimate the same group of, um, of E of N, right, I divide by four, all right? So let's only, uh, of course, this is a cardinality of that. So this is like a given name called two S of N, right? It's S N the integer. So then, um, then I just a theorem. I just write it. It's a his wrong. His wrong. Um, 1994. So the density that N is N square free is uh, this Sn equals zero is equal to a lambda. So as I say, it's, it's about, it's about 0 0.419. And I have to, not only that, I use another theorem, is Monsky. It's appendix of this paper. He described a method, he constructs a matrix, I call it a Monsky matrix, uh, to calculate S of N, and this matrix is also inside, um, this matrix is also inside F2, and in terms of, uh, of PQ, again, in the Lorando symbol. So, so that's basically what we have. So now we have two things. We want to show that the BSD hold, and we get two formula. One's about an error function, one's about a sample group, and both of them are written in uh, a Lorano symbol. So there's a huge combinatorial insight. Then I try to ask the students to do that, they refuse to do it. Well, there's a combinatorial, there's no mathematical insight. So even for kids, kids <laughs> So even for this, uh, um, I mean, a couple of them, I actually get an Olympiad gold medal, but I could not do it. So, so finally, uh, the step three is by um, Smith, uh, and who wanted to do a senior thesis with me at Princeton. So 
that he showed that, that he showed the theorem that the determinant of so the Monsky matrix equals the number I want to do, the product of the cost number of Q squared of D of square. So that's the, that's, I mean, it's, it's really amazing uh, a trick he used uh, in the like five pages combinatorics just for one case. Now it's 30 pages. So this is a, a step of proof. Uh, so last one, I, uh, what's left, uh, I will explain the proof, the first part. Uh, that's something to do with this conference, the vast procedure formula. How can I do this thing? I will use, uh, um, I will compute some periods uh, function, and I use the periods integral. So, so, is square root, and, uh, and mod two values. So we need to start mod two. So we start the elliptic curve E, xq minus x. So this is the elliptic curve, which is modular, so that has a modular form corresponding to it. So this is the inside, uh, the, S, the new form of weight 32. Then I will use Jacques Lagrange. to define uh, a representation pi inside of uh, the quaternion, right? The B is, a, uh, is the simplest quaternion you can think about it. Q, QI, QJ, QK, I square, J square, equal negative one. It's the best, the simplest quaternion you can do that. And uh, then I needed to, uh, we start with n, inside n, the square free. So I have a, a, a imaginary quadratic form, Q of n. Hmm. Okay, so I needed to set up the periods for this uh, uh, setting. And uh, the first of all, uh, my Fe uh, gives a, a representation pi uh, already right down there, okay? I don't need to worry much. Uh, so I need to define something. I have Kn, can embed into B, and uh, I can define a maximum order. Then I get, some, I make it embedded like that. Then I define some order. Rn is O over Kn plus four times OB, some order. I define a compact subgroup Un to be Rn head across. I, when I write a hit, it always means the final idea of completion. Um, times, um, times Kn2 Take that in, it's a compact subgroup inside. So then I have, yeah, that's the setting I have. If you do this setting, you run into um, um, cytotano, tano, there's a functional. You will find out the pi z of un, z means z coefficient, because right now my, my space is uh, it's just a finite set. So I can talk, I can talk about modular forms with the with the integer sin. So this actually is a, is a free module of z. So z times fn. fn uniquely determines up to sine plus or minus one. So that's the best, situ best situation you can have. Okay, um, then I will um, study some periods. 
integral, so it's basically a sum. Uh, have a But I will define, uh, I will not start the periods that's what you really define. I start slightly modifying a simpler one. So first of all, I define a class number. The class group, Kn, of course, in setting can embed into uh, this uh, sin over B head cross, B cross, mod Rn cross. Okay, this thing, if we calculate cardinality, is a six. It's not a very big space. No, it's a map here, sorry. There's a map here. It's not uh, embedded. If you calculate it, um, then I define the following stranger sign. I define Qn to be uh, the Fn of t, t inside. Uh, well, I mean, the mechanism. This is not a, not a, not a beautiful thing. Let's write alpha. And alpha n of t. T inside the class group of Kn. And I actually I want to do square, just the, the other part. The beautiful thing is the following. So this Fn, uh, I construct here satisfy amazing property. But if you know a little bit, it's not very surprising. Fn, the congruent one, it's actually congruent one on Bn square. So this is a phenomenon because my elliptic curve has a four torsion points. So my modular form is congruent to other stand series. So in some sense, it reflects that the, the modular form is almost like a constant function, right? So that's like, a, uh, it's more like a reflection. So this is a congruent to cardinality of Qn class group of Kn square, uh, square there. Anyway, the theorem we prove is the following, the Ln um, is congruent to uh, the sum of Q of Di, so this is same decomposition I read before, and as I say that, this immediately give my first part, right? But this is like, you see, this is very similar to what you say, except that I only work on the squares of class group, I didn't put any character. But of course you know how to do that, right? This must be come from, you put a character in, you take a sum, that becomes the center. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You didn't mean BN. There's no BN. Right? No BN, B is a, a simple yeah, B. B. What? You wrote BN. I wrote BN? Yeah. Okay, B, yeah. Squares, right? Square, yeah. Okay, so what's the uh, left? I want to prove the theorem. Um, two, three, okay. I will schedule to prove this theorem. You will see uh, how can I do, uh, apply the real uh, vast project formula. Uh, schedule proof. Okay, so there, there the, the, the input, um, okay, the input is if you write n to be d1, d2, the d2 is odd, then uh, you can get, you can construct an um, uh, unramified extension is a k, and join with d2 minus one divided by two, d2, so this is unramified extension. Quadratic extension, this is basically the Gauss chain theory, so this one gives you a character chi d1, d2 of kn, right? So we get this genius character, 
Then uh, we can uh, study uh, the Vespucci formula, the L pi base change to Kn, and the chi d1, d2 of at one by, uh, it's almost like integration of lambda given name called P fn chi d1, d2. So this is the integration of f t pi d1 dt of t dt of a dose can um, cross divide by many thin, maybe a q cross kn cross. You get this thing. Now, uh, what the main thing I want to do is uh, taking square root. Okay, so this one is equal to Le e d1 times Le d2 d1. When I take a square root, as I, I mean, that, well, I'm, I'm working on mod, mod two sense. Take a square root is the same sense as itself. So I will get a formula like that. The LD1 times LD2 is equal to plus or minus of the P Fn, sorry, of the chi D1, D2. So I will take a square root. Uh, I don't really need a many blackboard. Um, one more blackboard enough. So the next thing I want to do, um, next step I will do sum over All decomposition d2, I, dec I decompose that. Then I will get q of n, that is that part, the, the integration of the square of a class group equal to uh, summation plus or minus l over d1, l over d2. Because we'll take a square root, so that's something I get. Well, so this will give you a recurrency formula. that L of n equals Q of n plus of plus or minus L of d1, L of d2. Uh, d1 is not equal to one, d2 is not equal to one. If you apply the equivalence formula again, you will prove this theorem. From this theorem, we get the, the estimate of Sha. So we are done. Okay, let's finish my lecture.